Um, I am Dr. Nicole Ayers. I'm the clinic director of the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic of Valley Cities, um, located here in Lakewood, Washington. And um, I just wanna welcome and thank you all for taking the time to be here to recognize our first anniversary. Um, we of course would have loved to celebrate in person um, and had planned to celebrate in person, um, but of course with um, a pandemic, it makes it challenging. Um, but we're really grateful to have technology, um, especially a platform like what we're on right now with Zoom to allow us to celebrate virtually with you. Um, this is actually the same platform that we have been providing our mental health care 100% um, virtually since March um, so that we can continue to give health care to our military community. So also welcome to what telehealth looks like at the Cohen Clinic, um, just with a few more people than usual. Um, so today we're excited to review the year, show some videos, share some of our accomplishments um, since we opened to the community. Um, during this presentation, as Alicia mentioned, if you would like to make comments, share stories, share any experiences, um, feel free to do so in the chat box and Alicia will monitor it so we can make sure that um, we can address that with you. Okay. I'd like to introduce um, Sheikh Ali, who is the Chief Executive Officer for Valley Cities, which is the parent um, organization for our clinic um, and has been an absolute essential supporter and, and a key piece to our success is the leadership of Valley Cities. So welcome, Sheikh. Thank you. And Sheikh, if you want to say a few words. Yeah, very quickly. Um, again, good morning. Um, welcome to the first year anniversary. Um, as uh, Nicole introduced, that I'm the CEO of Valley Cities. Uh, I'm extremely, extremely proud of the work that we are doing, um, that you all are doing. A key factor in our ability to save our community um, is our staff. They are really outstanding. Thank you, Nicole, uh, for the team that you have built. Um, our strength is also in our relationship, and it clearly shows with both the people we save and our partners, uh, especially CVN, uh, corporate office, uh, Boeing, uh, in the community, not forgetting our local uh, leaders, our local representatives uh, that uh, really uh, that really provide the support and the help that's needed for uh, in our success. Through it all, our employees across the organization have really stepped forward to ask during this pandemic what more they can do to support the consumers and our partners and our co colleagues. And this has really been an outstanding um, effort uh, on, on the part of our staff. Uh, also, uh, really proud of the fact that uh, the CBN team in the very first year, within six months, really uh, they, they met the outcomes that, uh, uh, th that was the annual outcome pretty much. Uh, we were close to that, I would say, uh, to the annual outcome that was um, established by the CBN corporate office for our team. And we kept uh, adding staff, uh, and uh, we still had wait list, and uh, you know we were not able to provide the support that was needed in our community uh, for the post 9/11 uh, veterans that we were saving, uh, and we kept kept extending, and it continues to be that way. So, um, and, uh, and our staff and the team has really worked uh, really hard to provide as much service uh, as they can. This is really an unwavering commitment to those who save uh, is what makes uh, Valley Cities apart from the others uh, uh, and the outstanding um, effort that they have, uh, that they put in. Uh, it's the passion for uh, what we do that enables us really to succeed. We are, uh, at this time, we are in an unprecedented time, as you can see. Uh, we are creatures of, uh, you know, we social uh, gatherings and other things. And uh, this is sort of different that we are meeting through uh, uh, Zoom and Skype. Uh, so this is really a difficult time for us. School and, as you know, school closes and office closes, workforce shortage uh, with the people being sick, uh, supply chain disruption, cyber threat um, increasing quite a bit, uh, new risk. Uh, and challenges arises daily uh, 
individuals and companies like us, organizations like us, are taking a step to navigate a global pandemic right now that has upended our daily lives. While there's, um, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that we can uh, really improve on, um, it's, uh, we are really, one thing that we can really improve on is that we are good at delivering services. Uh, what we aren't good at is telling our stories of who we save and putting ourselves in the forefront of the solution for our peers. That's one thing that we, we need to kind of continue and struggle to, to meet. Uh, and uh, that's um, like, again, we, we don't uh, share the stories as best as we, we should, as, as best as we can. So uh, I think uh, that's one thing that's uh, where we lag and we could uh, really improve on. Um, we would not uh, be able to definitely achieve this uh, mission without your support. Thank you all for helping um, us make the organization that we are and um, for empowering our ability to improve behavioral health throughout our communities. So thank you again for the continued support. Um, a lot of thanks to Nicole and her team. Uh, they are really doing an outstanding job. Um, and uh, the CBN team, uh, the corporate office, basically Anthony and others, uh, providing the support uh, that's needed. So thank you again. Um, and uh, outstanding work in the very first year that uh, you have been open. And Nicole and the team, CBN Corporate Office, thank you. Thank you, Shaikh. So last year, um, kind of share a few memories starting at our grand opening. Um, we held our grand opening celebration to the community on March 22nd. Um, as the Cohen Veterans Network 11th Clinic um, and the very first Cohen Clinic in Washington State. What you may not know is that we actually soft launched on February 4th, which happened to be during Snowmageddon. Um, so it's pretty reflective of the passion, flexibility, and mission-focused mentality that has driven our team and has truly been part of um, how this team has been so, so successful. Um, we're one of the first clinics to open with major, major gifts, both from the local um, representatives with Pierce County and also corporate support. Um, Boeing Global Engagement has continued to be a huge supporter of our clinic and our mission um, and invest in our mission in being able to help military families um, and service members get back together. Um, we're so grateful for the continued, depart the continued partnership from Boeing Global Engagement um, and which just helps our ability to serve more veterans and more military families. Um, for our event, nearly 150 people attended our celebration, um, which included a morning press conference featuring local government officials, leaders, honored guests, um, as well as an afternoon panel discussion with members of the community. Um, our Cohen Clinic was supported by honorable attendees at the grand opening ceremony, including Washington State First Lady um, Trudy Inslee, veteran and Washington State native Scott Smiley, Congressman Denny Heck, Senator, State Senator Senator O'Ban, um, Pierce County Executive, our Pierce County Executive Bruce Demir, as well as the CBN CEO, Dr. Anthony Hassan, and of course, our Valley City CEO, Shay. Um, these leaders delivered congratu congratulatory remarks at the morning ceremony, which also was attended by military and business um, community leaders. During this event, I shared a little bit about what this clinic means to me um, and what I hoped it would mean to our military community at the time, um, which still stands true today. Our team is uniquely positioned to serve our veteran community here in Lakewood, um, but also throughout the Tacoma area and the state of Washington. And there's never been better evidence of that now when our team essentially went almost 100% telehealth services in a day. Um, I think it was about 80% in one day and 100% by the end of the week um, that we can truly provide our care across the state of Washington. Um, as a military spouse for over a decade, um, I've seen firsthand the challenges our military service members and military families face both during their services and afterwards as they transition to what their new life looks like. Leading this team, partnering with local veterans organizations, and being part of a network dedicated to expanding the availability of essential mental health services is an absolute honor. Um, we're quite literally serving my community and my family. Um, we're supporting readiness, we're easing transition, and we're helping families get back to better. Our team is saving lives. Um, I couldn't be prouder of the work this team has done in our past year um, and in this community, and I'm looking forward to all of the things that we can accomplish and all of the people we can help and support going forward. 
our goal that day was to provide care to, uh, to 500 veterans and military families. And you'll learn in a few slides um, in this presentation how far we exceeded those goals. So one of the things we were really excited to unveil at our in-person anniversary event that we're happy to be able to share here um, is our new clinic tour video. So I'm going to play the video for you so you can take the virtual tour of what it looks like inside our clinic and hear about some of our services and what we're available, what we can offer to our military community. Welcome to the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Valley Cities. Transition from active to veteran status can be really challenging. And so we want people to have the Cohen Clinic be an accessible resource, but also a place for hope. There's hope for things getting better. There's hope for purpose after service. It's figuring out what your new normal is. The majority of our staff in the Cohen Clinic are actually military veterans or family members themselves. So we get it, we understand. We want you to feel welcome from the moment you walk in the door. So we have a quick and easy check-in process. We have coffee and tea available for you to enjoy while you're waiting in the lobby. We have a space that's smaller and more private so that individuals who may feel uncomfortable in our larger waiting room can also feel at ease. We also have a kids waiting area so the kids can be entertained, creative, and play so there's a little bit less stress in the family. It's important for us to reduce as many barriers to care as we can. And so if you have an appointment in our clinic and you need somebody to watch your children while you attend your appointment, we have staff that's available to play and entertain and engage with the kids in a safe, warm, welcoming space while you attend your appointment. The clinic is a part of the community and we want people to experience that. So the artwork is all reflective of our connection to the military culture and also the Pacific Northwest. Our clinicians' offices are inviting. They're not your standard clinical setting. We really want it to be a comfortable space that you can collaboratively work with your therapist. We have individual therapy, couples therapy, family therapy, child and adolescent therapy, group therapy, and also case management services. We treat the entirety of the family and understand that one person's challenges is the whole family's challenges. Our clinic serves a lot of military children. Our child and family therapy rooms are set up for the clinicians to get on the child's level and be able to engage and build that trust through play so that the children can work through the stressors that they're facing in their life. Family therapy is an opportunity for families to collaborate and connect and work on challenges that they face so that they can move forward with healthy, productive relationships and lives. Group therapy is important because it's an opportunity for veterans and military families to get connected with people who are going through some of the same challenges. You can walk that road together. You can help each other with facilitation to feel better and live a full life. Our clinic is really uniquely situated to be able to serve our entire state via telehealth, which is face-to-face -face video therapy provided from the comfort of your home. You can use it via a tablet, cell phone, your laptop. So if someone isn't physically able to get into our clinic, they can still receive our high quality services. Outreach is an important part of our clinic. It allows us to build trust and confidence in our services within our military community and let people know that we're here to be able to support them. We are more than just a mental health clinic. Our case manager can help individuals and families get connected with resources for budgeting, career management, resume support, food, clothing, education, and other community resources. In our community room, we do kids arts and crafts, movie nights, yoga, sound baths, meditation, trainings, and also offer it as a meeting space for other veterans organizations. Our boardroom is a space for our team to collaborate, to participate in national trainings, discuss best practices, and really come together to ensure we're providing high quality care to those that we serve. We're giving back to the community that we love so much. They served our country, and so they deserve to be able to have productive, fulfilling lives after their service. As a military spouse myself, the Cohen Clinic and our mission um, is such a dream come true. And so to be able to bring this resource to our community is just amazing. We hope that you enjoyed our video. You can find our clinic tour video and also tours of other clinics if you have um, people that you are connected with in other areas and see some of our other clinics on the YouTube channel. So I also wanted to share a few um, client testimonials. And so see, this is some of the feedback that we've received over the past year. Um, 
and it really kind of highlights why we do the work that we do and why we're so proud to do the work that we do. Um, you know, and so you can see some of them here, but I want to highlight um, some of them. I said this clinic has been nothing short of amazing. It's easily the nicest behavioral health um, family clinic that I've been to yet. I'm overly satisfied and expectations are always exceeded. Um, I think one of the comments we routinely see um, is people enjoy the atmosphere. And um, we know right now, you know, people are receiving services remotely. Um, but we've also seen that people have continued to appreciate that. And so one of the other comments is it's going well and thank you for telehealth. Um, our ability to be nimble and really quickly adapt to the current situation, I think, has allowed us to keep the continuity of care um, that we pride ourselves in. So I just want to take the time to allow some of our team um, to share with you some of their favorite moments, highlights, funny stories, or any reflections that they have um, over the past year. And so two staff in particular, um, we have our office manager, Alicia, who is also a spouse of an active duty U.S. Um, Navy sailor. And we also have James, one of our child and family therapists here at the clinic, who um, is a U.S. Army veteran. Hi there. Thank you. I'm still a little emotional from the, uh, that, that clinic video. Um, one of the, uh, one of the initial clinicians that were hired on here prior to this in August, 2016, I retired after 21 years of service in the army. And, uh, I wanted to continue to serve, although my body had broken down my mind, I thought could keep up. So I got into the field of mental health with the, the sole purpose of working with veterans. Um, at one point, I was community mental health. I decided, you know what, let's put my resume out there and see what else is out there because a lot of the, the, the veteran organizations wanted seasoned uh, clinicians. So I just threw my resume out there and, and within a day, I got a phone call from a hiring agency saying, hey, we've got this organization that we think that uh, you might be a good fit for. They gave me the name for it. I'd never heard of it before. And, so quickly, I ran back into my office and I pulled up the website and, and it was like I was kicked in the chest. I couldn't believe that an organization like this existed. So uh, I called the organization back and I said, yep, let's do it. Uh, within actually that day, Nicole called me and I can tell and could tell immediately that this was an organization that was ran by people that knew the veteran community spoke like me, talked like me, acted like me, and uh, I, I got the interview. And then the interview happens, and it's with Nicole and another veteran, uh, with Lynn, our, our VP of clinics. And uh, I knew right then and there, they were gonna have to, they were gonna have to drag me out of there without a, a job offer. Um, this was the place I knew uh, was gonna help our community and was gonna help fellow veterans. We started here, um, as caseloads uh, were lighted. I can comfortably say that these are some of the most uh, talented and, and gifted and, and passionate um, clinicians I've ever, ever seen. And they understand the culture and, and they understand and they have a passion for helping this community and th these clients. And so we bring it every single day. Everybody is open to critique. Everybody is open to talking. And, and, and Nicole kind of stole my thunder earlier with the, the telehealth transition. I like to say we're an okay team. And not as an okay as in we're mediocre, but okay as in when a challenge, we're faced with a challenge, everybody's just, okay, let's do it. Um, and, and let's keep kicking butt. And every single person that is a part of this team is a rock star and they're motivated. And I couldn't be happier to be a part of, of a mission like the one we have here at CBN. So, for those uh, watching this video that are thinking about, uh, are still on the fence about getting help, get in here and see us. We, we speak your language. Uh, we're surrounded. And if, if we don't, there's plenty of us around here that can help translate the, the veteran speak uh, for each other.
So thank you. Thanks, James. Alicia, do you want to share a few words? Yes, let's see. I cannot spotlight my own video apparently, so hopefully you guys can all see me. Um, Alicia was one of the first people that we had hired um, when before we actually had a building to occupy. Um, so. Yes. <laughs> so I'd just like to echo some of the things that Nicole and James said. Um, I came to the team not looking for another job. I threw my resume out there and then it was like somebody had written this job description just for me. Um, I came to the team when we didn't even have a building. We were in Auburn um, stealing some offices from Valley Cities there and we just got started. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm like a little bit emotional after watching that video and then <laughs> hearing James talk. Um, but I'm emotional because this clinic is literally a dream come true for so many of us. Um, as a military spouse myself, um, I see the struggles that people have accessing care when they need it and where they need it. And the fact that we're able to fill that for people is just amazing. Um, I, I plan to tell some funny stories, but now I just feel like it's so important to let people know that our team is built of our community. We're literally serving our family members, our friends, and our community. And that's just so incredibly important to all of us that the little challenges that might not seem so little at first, we're able to overcome and adapt. Um, we've had a variety of them. As Nicole mentioned, we opened during Snowmageddon. Um, we had a plumbing disaster the day before our grand opening. Um, we had a fire in our building that knocked out our power. Um, we've had the pandemic. We've just had a variety of things that if we weren't the team that we were, could have really affected our morale and um, serving our clients. And it didn't because we um, put the mission first, we put the passion for our clients first, and we were able to overcome and come out even better. So I am just so proud of being a part of this team and I hope that I never leave. <laughs> Thank you both and you know, to, Add to that, we, we truly do. I couldn't be prouder of this team and in the work that we do, but also that it wouldn't be successful without the team that we have. Um, to give a scope of what we've accomplished and what we've, what we've done in the past year is, I'll talk about some data yet next, but our team tripled, our clinical team tripled in size over the past year. Um, you know, and it tripled in size to meet the demand um, that we found in our community and, and still, you know, I think that what slowed down the current demand is really just people being home um, and safe related to COVID. And so, you know, this team has continually rolled with every challenge that's been thrown at us. Um, and it, it's just an incredible reflection, I think, of the resilience of, you know, the military community in general. And, and what we see is that the resilience we see in the people we serve is, is a resilience that we have as a team as well. Um, I think that has served us well. I have one more story that we'll share um, from our data manager, Josh, who is also a U.S. Army veteran, and he's going to share in video his why um, for why he does this work. I look at the data as um, helping other people. So, you know, if I can serve, if it's not specifically a veteran, even if it's a veteran family, um, I look at it like the family can turn around and help that veteran because, um, you know, that's what helped me. I was in a very dark place. I had a lot of survivor's guilt. And actually, one of my buddies put me on to CVN. He went to a CVN clinic in Texas and uh, got some of the mental help that he needed to kind of get over his stuff. And that kind of gave me the strength. I was like, well, if you made it through, you know, and you got the help and you're in a better place, why am I holding on to it? And I'm prideful because I'm helping other veterans and I'm getting them the help that they need or they, that they deserve, frankly. Um, everybody deserves the help. You know, if they're struggling, they need the help. So to talk about a few milestones, um, you can see some data here, but we've accomplished a lot over our first year. Um, in the first year alone, we provided over 700 episodes of care to veterans and military family members. That's over 200 of our initial goal. Um, as Shake mentioned, we exceeded our initial goal um, pretty close to within the six, first six, seven months of us being open and serving clients. 
Um, this includes more than 200 episodes of care for veterans, more than 450 episodes of care for military family members, um, and telehealth also soared after the lighter part of the year. Um, previous to COVID, we provided 400 mental health services through this face-to-face -face video therapy that you're sitting on now. Since March of 2020, we've provided over 2,000 services via telehealth. Um, so we really are able to be flexible in how we serve, the, our, serve our community. Um, we've also developed some really important partnerships. Um, so we work closely with Onward to Opportunity as part of their program to discuss how important mental wellness is for successfully transitioning out of the services, the service for both military family members um, and the military member. We partner with um, American Lake and Madigan Army Medical Center so that there's no wrong door for our military families. Um, if they're the best fit, we will help you get there. If we're a better fit or we can get you in sooner, both those organizations have partnered with us to make sure that our community, our military community can get the help that they need. Um, we've partnered with other local organizations such as Creative Forces to bring a summer art series, which you will see about on our social media page. We're able to reach these milestones because of the passion and dedication of our team, but also the support of this community. Um, mental health has never been more important than it's right now, and we will continue to need the support um, from our community to be able to provide these really needed mental health services. Um, so to talk a little bit about um, community support, I do have Carl Marucci, the Senior VP of Advancement with the Cohen's Veteran Network. Thank you, Nicole. It's great to be uh, uh, a part of this presentation today and this gathering. Uh, sorry we could not do this in person. Um, my name again is Carl Marucci. You see my title there as Senior Vice President for Advancement. And I'm based out of uh, Cohen Veterans Network uh, headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut. My role is to help the clinics continue to sustain themselves um, uh, financially. Um, it, in the present and in the future. What I get to see, as, as wonderful as we're hearing about the success of, of the clinic at Valley Cities, I get to see it from a national perspective. Like already, your clinic is one of 16 that are already open and doing tremendous work for our veterans and, and military families. We have a target of 25 clinics to open by the end of 2021, and that 25th clinic is going to be a virtual clinic where we can reach into areas of our country where a bricks and mortar facility just isn't warranted because uh, the folks are so scattered where it will be kind of telehealth or virtual. We will be at 21 clinics by the end of this year. Already Cohen Veterans Network nationally has served more than 17,000 unique clients. And why I, I share that number is, it is by far the largest uh, nonprofit that, has, that is serving veterans and military uh, family members with mental health services. Um, and we couldn't do it without the wonderful cooperation with organizations like Valley Cities and without the leadership and the staff there and of our clinic uh, led by Nicole. We can't do it alone. Mr. Steve Cohen, he has graciously uh, created the foundational support and will continue to be there to support the clinic. But the clinics grow and clinics expand and yours is an example of that in spades. We can't do it alone and so we're thrilled to have the financial support of other uh, corporations and foundations and individuals. In your own backyard, Boeing has been a wonderful partner uh, to the clinic. We're so excited to have them as partners. Uh, we also look at the wonderful support from, uh, the, from grants from Pierce County. The Greater Tacoma Community Foundation has also uh, pitched in and, and helped. And across the network, we're seeing continued to support from organizations like American Airlines, Bank of America, CVS, Safeway, TD Bank is a supporter, Prudential, even the San Diego Padres is supporting one of our clinics out, out in the San Diego area. Wounded Warrior Project has been a, a supporter as well. These are people who recognize the important work of, of Cohen Veterans Network individually and nationally and want to do something. 
We're also really thrilled about state funding that we've received across the network. State funding from North Carolina, from Maryland, and from the state of Texas. We're looking uh, further to see how we can continue to build that support to continue to build out our clinics uh, in the present and years to come. If I may, I would just like to close with a, with a brief story. It's one of my favorite stories. It's a true story about a friend of mine. I never use his real name, so I'll call him Josh. His name isn't Josh, but I'll call him Josh. Josh, Josh is a veteran, served in, in the Army in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, he and I are best buddies. He is married, he has a little, he has a young son. And the common passion that Josh and I share is that we are both motorcycle fans. We both own Italian Ducati race boat motorcycles, and we love to ride together. And sometimes we ride in a pack. And one day there were about 20, 20 of us riders. We stopped for a break. Bikers love to, to chew the fat uh, uh, as much as they like to ride. And we were chatting as a group. And it came to light that Josh was a veteran. And everybody was very supportive. And they were saying, yeah, we really support the, tr the troops. We really support our veterans. Thank you for your service. And, and Josh responded with one word, one word. He looked at the group and he said, how? That's all he said was how. The group fell silent. After that, uh, I said to Josh, I said, you really threw a wet blanket on that conversation, didn't you, bud? And he said, you know, Carl, I needed to say something. I said, well, why did you say that? He said, you know, as a veteran, we, we love the, the pats on the back. We love the affirmation. We love the gratitude for our service. As a veteran, we're proud of our flag and of the country that it represents. He says, but support for the troops and support for veterans and support for military families has to go beyond flag waving. It's got to start, go, go beyond verbal gratitude. Tell me something that you're doing tangible to support the troops. Tell me something tangible you're doing to support veterans who have difficult transition issues when they come up home. Tell, tell me what you're doing tangibly to support military families who have been through the mill in joining their partners uh, and spouses as they've served our country and are now back in, in, in civilian life. And I'll never forget that story because that's what gives reason for what I do and what, you, what I am joining on all of you today. Answer Josh's question, how? How do you support the troops? How do you support veterans? How do you support military families? What are we doing tangibly? to do that. Thank you, Boeing, for being an important part of that answer to how. Thank you, Pierce County, for being an important part of that thank you of how. Thank you, Greater Tacoma Community Foundation, for the answering that how. And I invite them and all of you to continue to be ambassadors for your clinic, right in your own areas, to invite others to answer that how to support our, our, our active duty members, our veterans, and our military families and services they deserve. Thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Thank you so much, Carl. So one of, the, one of our hows of how we are gonna continue um, to serve our greater military community um, is we are excited to announce a series of virtual workshops um, over the summer. And so, we have a couple that are upcoming. Um, we have a virtual open house that'll be with Cohen Clinic staff. Um, this will be open to the large community that can come in, ask questions about the services that we offer, what we can do, whatever is kind of burning and on your mind. And we wanna you know, open the doors and be available to answer those questions. Um, that'll be coming up on Thursday, July 9th at 10 a.m. We will also be having a webinar about the understanding the reality of trauma and change explicitly how it relates to our current situation of living our lives during a pandemic. Um, so myself and one of our wonderful therapists, Jennifer Fama, will be presenting about the realities of trauma. And that'll happen Thursday, July 23rd at 11 a.m. 
and then we also have our final panel, which is enriching quality relationships, um, focusing spe specifically on parenting and coupling. Um, I think one of the greatest surprises over the past year is just um, seeing the need of our military community for family therapy, for couples therapy, for child therapy. Um, and so we have a fantastic team of clinicians that works with our parents, our families, and our couples. Um, so James, Christina, and David, um, are all licensed clinicians in, um, in our clinic who are going to share their experiences, their tips, um, and answer any questions you have about parenting and coupling. Um, and that'll be Thursday, August 6th at 10 a.m. You'll be able to hear about those series of webinars, keep up with the clinic, um, and more on our social media. So we have a Facebook site. You can look up Cohen Clinic at Valley Cities. You can also follow us on Twitter. There is the Cohen's Veteran Network YouTube channel, which has our clinic tour video if you'd like to share it. Also, if you would like to check out any of our other clinics across the network. Um, we are still in the building, um, even though we're providing our services virtually as for the time being. And so you can learn more about us by emailing the clinic, calling the clinic, um, or checking out our website. I appreciate so much your continued support of our clinic, of our team, and of our mission, um, and most especially your support for our local military community and military families. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I appreciate it, and I hope that you all are staying well um, and continue to find your how um, and do the fantastic work that you do in your own communities. Thank you.